SpaceX CEO Elon Musk was recently awarded by media giant Axel Springer, which recognized his talent for innovation and ability to face social responsibility. Elon was interviewed by the Axel Springer CEO, Matthias Doppner, who asked him about the future of SpaceX and Starship. During the interview, Musk said that he expects humans will land on Mars in around six years, and that he's fairly confident in that timeline. Um, I, I think it, I, I feel fairly confident about uh, six years from now. So every the, the Mars uh, Earth Mars synchronization occurs roughly every 26 months. So we had one this year, the summer, and uh, so that means in roughly like about two years there'll be another one, um, and uh, then two years after that. So I think I'd say if you say six years from now, I think highly confident. Uh, if we get lucky, maybe four years. According to him, SpaceX plans to do an uncrewed launch and landing on Mars in about two years from now. Uh, and then we want to try to send a, an uh, uncrewed vehicle there in two years. Musk also hopes to launch himself into orbit within two or three years. However, his primary focus is to ensure the technology is in place to enable a lot of people to go to Mars and to have a base on the moon. I don't know, possibly in two or three years. Um, I mean, I'm mostly concerned with developing the technology that can enable uh, a lot of people to go to Mars and make life multiplanetary, have a base on the moon, um, a city on Mars. Uh, and I think it's important that we strive to have a self-sustaining city on Mars as, uh, as soon as possible. Last month, Musk tweeted that, to build a city on Mars, humans would have to live in glass domes at first. Eventually, the red planet could be terraformed to support life. According to him, the process will be too slow to be relevant in our lifetime, though it's important that a base is established on Mars sometime soon. At least a future spacefaring civilization, discovering our ruins, will be impressed humans got that far. If all goes according to his plan, we will witness the first human setting foot on Mars in this decade. The massive 305 meters Arecibo telescope in Puerto Rico, collapsed in on itself on Tuesday, resulting in damage to the dish and surrounding facilities. Engineers had previously predicted the catastrophic failure after the telescope suffered two major cable malfunctions over the last couple of months. In August, the observatory suffered its first major malfunction when an auxiliary cable came loose from its socket and fell onto the observatory's dish, punching a large hole in the structure. As the engineers were trying to figure out a path forward for repairs, a second main cable failed on November 6. This time, the cable snapped and fell onto Arecibo's giant dish, causing damage to other cables nearby. The National Science Foundation, which oversees Arecibo, later confirmed that the telescope would eventually collapse on itself. A video captured on December 1 shows the moment when support cables snapped, causing the massive 900-ton structure suspended above Arecibo to fall onto the observatory's iconic 1,000-foot wide dish. The footage highlights the moment when multiple cables snapped, causing the platform to swing outward and hit the side of the dish. The collapse also brought down the tops of the three support towers surrounding Arecibo, where the cables had been connected to keep the platform in the air. Being the most powerful radar, scientists employed Arecibo to observe planets and asteroids, making several discoveries, including finding prebiotic molecules in distant galaxies, the first exoplanets, and the first millisecond pulsar. The telescope was popularized beyond the scientific community by the 1995 James Bond film Goldeneye and Jodie Foster's 1997 film Contact. The National Science Foundation is now trying to figure out how to clean up Arecibo safely, and the engineers are planning to assess the area to figure out how stable the remaining structures are. China's Chang'e 5 lunar probe, which was launched from the Wenchang Space Launch Center last month successfully landed, collected sample, and lifted off from the moon last week. Chang'e 5 is China's first sample return mission, aiming to return at least 2 kilograms of lunar soil to Earth. After entering the lunar orbit last month, the spacecraft's lander and ascender module separated from the service module and performed a powered descent and landing on the lunar surface. The modules touched down at the landing site Mons Rumker and deployed its solar array and antenna to begin its work on the moon. The lander then shoveled some surface material and drilled a two-meter deep hole to scoop up the lunar soil. The samples are then stored in a sealed container within the ascending module. 
After two days of surface operations and collecting about two kilograms of lunar soil, the ascender, which sat on top of the lander, lifted off from the landing site, carrying with it the first fresh lunar samples since 1976. Six minutes later, the ascent spacecraft achieved lunar orbit, marking a huge milestone in the mission. Two days later, on December 5, the ascender module docked in orbit with the service module. The rendezvous and docking took place without external assistance from navigation satellites. The operation was the first automated rendezvous and docking for a spacecraft in lunar orbit. The ascender then delivered a sealed container holding 2 kilograms of lunar rocks and soil into the reentry capsule. A few hours later, the ascender module got jettisoned, leaving the service module with the reentry capsule containing moon samples in the lunar orbit. The spacecraft will need to wait in lunar orbit for several days for a narrow window to fire its engines to head for Earth. This carefully timed trans-Earth injection maneuver will allow the orbiter to deliver the reentry module to Earth at the precise time to land in Inner Mongolia. The European Space Agency, in partnership with Swiss startup ClearSpace, will launch the first active space debris removal mission in 2025. ESA signed a $103 million deal to purchase the unique service, which will attempt to claw a retired Vespa payload adapter and deorbit it for disposal. The spent rocket part, weighing in at 113 kilograms, was left at an altitude of around 800 kilometers back in 2013. The object was selected because it is the approximate size and weight of a small satellite, an initial target market for ClearSpace's debris removal service. The 500-kilogram ClearSpace-1 spacecraft is slated to be launched aboard a Vega Sea rocket. The spacecraft features cameras, radar and lighter for navigation, and four articulating tentacles designed to capture the target object. Once launched, the ClearSpace-1 spacecraft will be deployed into a 500-kilometer orbit for commissioning and testing. The spacecraft will then be raised to the target orbit for rendezvous and capture. After the target object has been captured, the spacecraft will drag itself and its payload into a destructive orbit to burn up in the atmosphere. Space debris is a threat to the proper functioning of the space infrastructure on which modern society relies. This mission demonstrates the technological feasibility and paves the way for a system capable of servicing megaconstellations in the future. Harvard Medical School scientists have successfully restored vision in mice by turning back the clock on aged eye cells in the retina to recapture youthful gene function. The work published on December 2nd in Nature suggests a new approach to reversing the age-related decline by reprogramming some cells to a younger state in which they are better able to repair or replace damaged tissues. For their work, the team used an adeno-associated virus as a vehicle to deliver three youth-restoring genes into the retinas of a mice. The treatment promoted nerve regeneration and reversed vision loss in mice with a condition mimicking human glaucoma. Thus, the study demonstrates that it's possible to safely reverse the age of complex tissues, such as the retina, and restore its youthful biological function. But the researchers also caution that the work has so far has been carried out only in mice, and it remains to be seen whether the approach will translate to people or to other tissues and organs that are ravaged by time.